Hi, this is lesson 8.2. We have something that's called the integral test. And also we're going to talk about P-series. We're going to be talking about convergent and divergent series again. And so this just gives us more tools in the toolbox to analyze different sums that we do have and see if they do converge or if they do diverge. And so here is the integral test. If the function f of x is positive, continuous, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1, and a sub n is equal to f of n. In other words, your integrand matches up with the function that's uh, creating your terms of your sequence. Then the sum from n equal to 1 to infinity of a sub n and 1 to infinity of f of x dx, either both converge or diverge. And so one goes with each other. Some of these tests, uh, maybe they only do one of the two, but in this test, if both converge, then uh, both will, if one converges, the other one will. If, both, if one diverges, the other one will. There, I got that out. Now, when we do find this sum, it is not equal to the summation that I'm trying to deal with. However, it just talks about are we able to converge or are we able to diverge based upon what we have. Now, if we look at this one right here, does it, does it satisfy my conditions? It is positive. It is continuous, and it is decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1. So I can take my definite integral to check this now. So this would be 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. If we do this, this is a, a improper integral, so we got to go b. It goes to infinity of 1 to b of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So I did the limiting process here, and so the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is the arctan of x, and so I still have my limits 1 to b and the limit, and so I plug in the b, and now I satisfy this thing. So the arctan, as b goes to infinity, is pi over 2, and the arctan of 1 is going to be pi over 4. This is equal to pi over 4. So our conclusion then is that the series converges because the integral converges. And so this is the integral test. IT, if you wish. So let's look at number two now. For number two, we have a similar type of situation. This is all positive, continuous, and decreasing decreasing. So if I set up the integral test for this, notice the lower index is 2. Yes, you do have to start with a 2. Why don't you try this one? Pause this and give it a go. So the definite integral of this thing, this is one of those u substitutions. I got the l and x. I got 1 over x. And so I can do that u substitution and the antiderivative becomes what I have here, ln of ln x. And that's from 2 to b as b goes to infinity. If I uh, do this limit now, what happens as I plug in infinity into this piece right here? Well, it's going to go off to infinity. And if I take the ln of uh, something going off to infinity, I'm also going to go off to infinity. It will go very slow off to infinity, but it does. And so this thing right here will diverge. And when we diverge, we say that the series, so we're trying to classify the series, not the integral, but the series diverges by the integral test. Now, one quick thing about this, why does this one start at 2? Well, if we start at 1, that would have ln 0 in the denominator. We really can't do that. That'd be undefined. Also, when we're taking this integral, that wouldn't work for this integral either. Uh, so we'd have problems with that as well. So that's what we got. Okay, rolling on. Example number three here. We have this situation. So first of all, check. Is it positive? Is it decreasing? 
And is it continuous if I write it in a function? Yes, all to those. So the integral test will work for this. So why don't you go ahead, pause this, and try this. Uh, if you want to follow me, you can, but I'm going to probably jump pretty quick on this one. 0 to infinity, 1 over x dx. Whatever this integral does will tell me if this diver diverges or converges. So I get to this point right here. I've taken the limit uh, set up, and then now I plug in the b going to infinity. This is going to go off to infinity, too. Uh, ln of infinity is infinity, so this will diverge. And therefore, the series diverges by the integral test. Try number four. So what happens here now? Uh, I hope you paused this and tried this. So the antiderivative of x to the negative 1 half is equal to 2x to the 1 half. Plug in b and show your limits. So b going to infinity. Well, the square root of infinity is still going to infinity, so this one will diverge. Therefore, for our test, the series diverges by the integral test. Try the last one. These are all setting up pretty similar in nature. Notice that it is positive, and it is decreasing, and it is continuous when you put it in function form. So looking at this one, the antiderivative of x to the negative 2 is negative 1 over x. Plug in the b, plug in the 1, we get this limit. What happens now when we take this b going to infinity and we plug it in for our b? I hope you can see that this whole term will go to 0 because the denominator is going to infinity. So that this limit is a 1 for that integral. And so then that tells me that the series converges by the integral test. Does the series converge to 1? The answer is not necessarily. So be careful. Just because we get this 1 here does not mean that this series does equate to a sum of 1. Now let's look at P-series and the harmonic series. The harmonic series is just a special case of the P-series. In fact, uh, example 3, 4, and 5 are all examples of a P-series. And so a, uh, if P is a positive constant, then 1 over n to the P. That means that you have n in the denominator and it has an exponent on it. So this is equal to 1 over 1 to the p, 1 over 2 to the p, 1 over 3 to the p. This is called a p-series. So I said the last three examples are all p-series, and each one of them could have been done with the following tests. However, we did use the integral test. Notice this one. This is what we call the harmonic. That ended up diverging. This one has an exponent of 1 half. I'm sorry, going back here, this has an exponent of 1 in the P-series representation. This has a, an exponent of 1 half in the P-series representation. This one has a, an exponent of 2 in the P-series representation. The 2 converged, the 1 half, and the 1 did not. And so what do we think our rules might be? Well, if P is greater than 1 then the p-series converges. If p is less than or equal to 1, then the p-series will diverge. And I should say that this is greater than 0 as well. If you have a negative exponent, then the terms will be up in the numerator, so yes, we'll be divergent anyways. All right, so if we look at this, number 6, I have this. This should be a dot, dot, dot. If I rewrite this, this looks like 2 to the 3 halves to me because it's 2 to the first times 2 to the 1 half. Add exponents, so 2 to the 3 halves. And so I'm going to get 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 3 halves, plus 1 over 3 to the 3 halves, plus 1 over, to the th 1 over 4 to the 3 halves, plus dot, dot, dot. Is this one going to converge or diverge? Well, I have the P series where P is greater than 1, because P is equal to 3 halves. So this will converge by the P-series test. 
There you go. So number seven, uh-oh, look at that. Well, I'll simplify that first, see if you can do that and come back to me. With this one, I do have the summation from n equal to one, and this is the terms that I do have. This is, uh, p is not negative two-thirds. We can write this so that this becomes one over n to the two-thirds. So really, p is equal to two-thirds. You gotta put it in the denominator, the n, in order to read off what the p is. Uh, regardless, this is going to be uh, p equal to two-thirds, which is less than one, so that this is going to diverge by the p-series test. So now wrapping this up, we did two things today. One is that we talked about convergence by the integral test. So with the integral test, remember that it has to be positive terms only and it has to be continuous, and the terms have to be decreasing. It has to be decreasing. And then for the p-series test, it's one over n to the p. And we have the statement right here. p greater than one, then the p-series converges. p less than or equal to one, then the p-series will diverge. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for listening and have a great day.